application. And then the third case of note in the preemption area came out in the very last day of the term. It was called Cuomo versus the Clearinghouse, but it, actually it was a case that uh, was brought by the New York Attorney General under the prior administration of Elliot Spitzer. Cuomo stepped into his shoes, and so the case is named Cuomo versus the Clearinghouse. But this is a case that really illustrates this blue states' rights phenomenon I've been trying to describe to you. Where did it come from? Well, you have a federal government for a long period of time that takes a more permissive attitude toward the enforcement of environmental laws, consumer protection laws, banking and financial regulation. And you have a bunch of state attorneys general and other regulators. Elliot Spitzer is just one example in the state of New York who step into what they perceive as a federal regulatory vacuum and try to make aggressive use of state law to do things they think the feds should be doing but are not. In this case, curbing discriminatory lending practices by national banks. We, in retrospect, wish the national banks had been more discriminating, but not along the lines that uh, Elliot Spitzer was challenging. So uh, the Cuomo versus Clearinghouse case asks the question, was the Attorney General of New York permitted to go after national banks for supposed discrimination in lending when the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency had interpreted federal banking law, the National Banking Act, to give it exclusive so-called visitorial powers. Exclusive visitorial powers, meaning only the feds can go inspect and investigate the practices of a, of a national bank. The court uh, rejected the Office of the Comptroller of Currency's argument in a five to four decision. And here's where I want to make the first of my observations that I, predict, I mentioned earlier, that this is a strange bedfellows case. This is a lineup in which Justice Scalia writes for the majority, joined by Justice Stevens, Souter, Ginsburg, and Breyer. And that might be all the more surprising because here the court declined to give deference to the administrative agency, the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency, when of course it was Justice Scalia who in the Chevron decision first called for greater deference to agency interpretations of ambiguous federal statutes. Here, says Scalia, there may be preemption as to certain investigative activities, but when the New York Attorney General goes to court to enforce the law, nothing about the term visitorial powers covers that kind of judicial law enforcement, so no preemption. Now, putting these together, can you say, that, well, now there's a trend. Uh, the court is now going to garner these narrow five to four majorities for blue states' rights? No. That would be premature because as you well know, because you face preemption cases in your courts all the time, preemption cases depend on the particular statute at issue and its particular language. So three cases does not a trend make, but I would, I, I would just note that this is a, a quite a dramatic result against the backdrop of recent cases in which the court has tended more to go with federal preemption. It suggests that preemption is much more in equipoise, much more in play, and blue states' rights can sometimes prevail. Let me turn next to the voting rights cases 